Hello, welcome! In today's video we're going to talk about 5 keys to better gut health. How to improve your immunity, how to um, decrease food intolerances and overall build strong, happy, healthy body. I have been on this health journey now for two decades um, and I myself struggle with allergies, food intolerances, immune problems, sensitivities, you name it. And one thing which came very clear for me over that journey of tackling it really is that the gut health is so crucial uh, in addressing before anything else in the body can heal. So I be, so I decided to do those foundation to uh, great health and well-being series. Uh, but the first video in those series is the gut health and that's where we start. So if you are someone who's been struggling with food intolerances, sensitivities, uh, immune problems, gut health uh, or digestive issues such bloating or heartburn or constipation, if uh, uh, the gut is really a place where you want to start. Um, and especially if you have been looking and searching for the answers uh, for a while, um, I think this is the place where you want to be. For those who don't know me, my name is Arletta um, and after many years of struggling with low energy and many physical issues, um, I have uh, decided and started on studying and learning about what it really takes to heal your body holistically without the one size fits all solution. I tackled depression, uh, gluten intolerance, uh, and many other physical issues. And as I IAN certified health coach with specialization in uh, gut health, a theta healer and soon to be nutrition therapist, I'm here to help you to do the same. So we have 10 times more bacteria in our body than we have human cells, which is quite interesting because that means we are really much more bacteria than human. And the, the approximate weight of our bacteria, or the old bacteria we're carrying in our body and on our body, it's around the same as the weight of your brain. So that's a lot of guys we're carrying around. They're like super tiny, so it's billions and billions. And um, so the gut produces 90% of your serotonin, which is very often uh, lacking in people with depression. 70% of your immune system is in fact in your gut. And um, the gut bacteria, it's really contributing to so many different processes like regulating hormones, um, eliminating toxins from your body, uh, influencing obesity or diabetes, uh, and overall effects, many different effects on the immune system. So let's dive into those five keys to better gut health um, in order to improve um, your immunity and digestion. So the first one may seem like another big thing, but it's chew your food. Chewing your food is absolutely crucial and I like to think is the most affordable way of getting uh, most of out of your food. So we absorb uh, somewhere between 10% and 90% of our nutrition from the food we eat. And a lot of that goes to gut health, but a lot of it as well links to, to the chewing of the food. So do you often uh, get bloated? Do you struggle with indigestion? Do you eat and seem to feel hungry nevertheless? Um, chewing food thoroughly is crucial for good health and absorption of nutrition, as I said. Uh, the ideal, we try at least 30 times, but actually the optimal way would be to chew each bite of your food until it is liquidized. Um, so I would argue that is the best, as I said, the best and most affordable way to increase your nutrition in intake. Um, we start digesting carbohydrates in our mouth. Um, there are three different types of glands uh, releasing saliva uh, plus a digestive enzyme in our mouth. Um, and uh, this is all released while we chew our food. In order for our small uh, intestine absorb nutrition, uh, we uh, have to uh, chew it 
into really, really tiny pieces. If those pieces are not small enough, the enzyme will not have enough surface to coat them. And therefore, our gut cannot absorb the nutrition from those pieces and they go through our digestive tract uh, undigested. <laughs> And therefore, all that nutrition and all that food and that food is still there. It doesn't go into our body. Uh, so the bottom line is that um, the bigger, uh, the, if the food pieces are too large, the stomach cannot uh, extract the goodness from it. Uh, and also it may cons, uh, cause fermentation and bloating. You know, there's it's, it's a long, long, long subject, but it can contribute to that as well. But so we have first step is to chew your food. Um, step number two is replace processed food with wall foods. <laughs> this one is really two things. I just try to squeeze it into one. So first we want to remove the processed food and second we want to um, replace them with wall foods. Um, so wall foods are foods uh, which really I look at. Those are foods which you can look at and recognize and you know where they came from, where they grew, you can imagine how they grew. So you see an apple, you know, it's an apple and it grew on a tree. You know, you see a piece of meat, um, you know, or a whole chicken or something, you know where it came from. You know, you see nuts, you, you see what you're eating. And this is where the great difference comes from processed food. Most of the times when we look on processed food, we, we have no idea how they were produced, what went in it. And there's so many problems with it let's just not start me on it but um the ones i want to mention here are um apart from of obviously conserved uh, preservatives and other chemicals which are added to processed food to make them um stay fresh for a very long time which is worrying <laughs> Um, there are as well emulsifiers which actually uh, damage lining of our gut, which then uh, it's linked to causing leaky gut. Um, you know, the, you know, damage lining of your gut will be uh, will be one of those things which is linked to to leaky gut, um, food intolerances, um, inflammation, um, and flare ups, and any um, autoimmune. Uh, diseases which which just are caused by um, yeah by chain of reactions so uh, so this is the first time let's just you know we're trying to focus on removing the uh, processed food the second one is to add wall foods to your diet um, which wall foods you want to add is up to you this is something what I preach is about bio individuality we are all different and unique and you really need to find things which works for you best uh, so therefore um you know what 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 all foods works for me may not work that well for your body type and um, but you know the ideas are you know wall vegetables wall fruits wall grains you know meats if you eat those um and then figure out which one works best with your body so here we are. Number three is add fermented foods, probiotics and prebiotics. Um, so uh, I'm sure most of you already heard of some form of those. The fermented foods are a buzzword these days. Um, I'm going to quickly explain what's what and then we go dive deeper in some of those. I thought this is a very broad subject, so I'm really compressing it here. Um, so antibiotics is something what we are most uh, familiar with. Um, probably a lot of us already taken some in, point, in some point in our lives. Antibiotics are anti-life. They will kill um, uh, any bacteria in the system, whether there are good bacteria or bad bacteria, without exceptions. So probiotics are pro-life. Those are the over-the-counter available in capsules. Um, and, and those are um, available per billions in a capsule, living organisms which we uh, and digest, uh, digest to, in order to um, support our gut. Prebiotics are uh, foods which um, feeds our bacteria, the one inside our gut, um, usually uh, ones with the fibers. And fermented foods are uh, foods which are uh, fermented um, uh, we fermented through a beneficial bacteria 
uh, which are partially broken down and then we eat those after they were fermented. And um, so just before we go any further, I just want to mention as well that um, for some people, uh, taking probiotics or fermented foods would not be recommended. And those are people who have extreme uh, gut dysbiosis, um, who have a small intestine bacteria overgrowth and IBS. Uh, and as well for anyone who is on low FODMAP diet, um, if you are in any doubt, just uh, consult your doctor. Um, so let's go into probiotics first. So adding probiotics will strengthen uh, and improve um, the quality and population of your gut microbiome. Uh, so making sure that our microbiome has a high uh, diversity and, um, uh, and high numbers. Um, so the population is, uh, is high, it's uh, crucial as our bacteria um, in the gut uh, produces hormones, vitamins, um, repairs our gut lining um, and as well helps to clean to toxins out of our body. Um, if you have been uh, especially recently taking antibiotics, um, I would assume most of the times the doctors do that. If not, you can always ask for that. Is uh, to have prescribed uh, or taken uh, probiotics um, in form of capsules. This is in order to um, repopulate our gut with all the good guys um, without leaving the space uh, after the antibiotics wipes everything out for the uh, non-beneficial or harmful bacteria to grow too much or yeast or things like that. So we just want to bring all the good guys to make sure that they take back their space in our gut. Um, it is worth checking the count of bacteria on the package uh, when you're buying those um, and as well whether, for example, the capsule is able to withstand the stomach acid, acid so just to make sure that um, you're getting the best what's available in the market. Um, uh, but there's really, you know, I would advise really to do research and just see what you're looking for and maybe specific strain depending on what kind of condition you have had or maybe um, depending on your uh, bio-individuality, you, you will do better maybe with one type or of strain or bacteria more than the, with the other. So that's really worth researching. Uh, it's really broad subject. So this is, yeah. Uh, fermented foods um are just uh, uh, foods which are, are fermented um but really what it means is the foods were um pre-digested uh, or partially digested by bacteria before you eat it and um, this actually helps with uh digest digesting of that food by our gut but it as well increases the uh, level of nutrition available in the food you're eating. Um, so that's really uh, important. And as well, uh, let me just check when I'm um, covering everything. Oh yeah, so there are studies we are showing that uh, fermented foods uh, improve mood, um, improve uh, immune system and downregulate the inflammation. Fermented foods are overall higher in diversity of um, uh, of the bacteria, so you have more varieties of bacteria in fermented foods, although the overall number will be lower than in probiotics. Um, personally, I eat fermented food very, very often, a few times a day. Um, and um, I would really recommend to anyone who wants to have a healthy gut, um, unless of course you have the condition which I mentioned before, to um, just add a tablespoon maybe of sauerkraut or kimchi or any um, fermented foods you like before or with each meal. It can be ke kefir as well. Um, and there is one thing to mention as well. It happens uh, with people who maybe have not been taking any probiotics or fermented foods for a long time or never really. And um, uh, in, they may experience discomfort in their stomach or being chased to go to toilet or things like that. And this is not necessarily um, uncommon. It happens because um, most likely you have started with high to uh, do high to high dosage, and your body is just not used to it. 
um, and it is as well partially caused by the die off of the bad guys and there is you know you you, you want to go with it slowly so you just you build your um um you build your body and and get used to it uh, to it so if that happens to you uh if you upset tummy after eating some fermented foods um just make sure that you lower the dose so if you're eating um you, you know if you're eating a tablespoon of um a sauerkraut I, I would imagine a tablespoon wouldn't do it but uh but you know let's say then you go to half tablespoon and then you know uh, you get to that point in which you feel all right eating and then you may increase next time you know so uh when you have a few days when you feel all right and then you increase and start taking a bit more next time um so yes that's that that's important to remember and um Apart from repopulating and looking after your gut microbiome, um, we need to feed it as well. Um, so um, prebiotics, as I mentioned before, they will feed your microbiome. Um, uh, any type of soluble fiber uh, will do that. Um, so there are, um, you know, most vegetables are really great. They have fiber in, but there are, the ones with the highest proportion of those will be uh, raw leeks, uh, on, raw onions, raw garlic. Um, let me see. Uh, I don't remember. But asparagus, chicory root, dandelion greens, banana and kiwi. Um, I will. Uh, you can find those in the description box. Uh, so, yeah, you can start with those. Um, I would say um, interesting fact is that if you don't feed your microbiome uh, all these bacteria you have in your gut, they will get hungry and start eating your gut lining. Um, and um, it's not a pleasant. Well, this, this, this sounds a bit weird, but you know, let's you know we don't need to go there. <laughs> let's just feed them. Um, it. Uh, it is interesting because normally actually bacteria contributes to re, um, uh, regrowth and um, repair of gut lining. So it just shows that where there is a lack of that balance, um, they, even the good guys can create a bit of a um, discomfort for us or problems. So, so it's always worth to remember that we just want to create this very holistic um, and balance uh, and, and harmony in, within our body. Um what else? Oh yes, yeah. so probiotics uh, are linked actually to increase calcium and magnesium absorption um so uh, as well uh, uh, to improve insulin sensitivity. So there is another benefit of uh, you know eating eating pro uh, prebiotics. Um so I think that's that. Okay. Okay, number four is uh, drink an adequate amount of water. So I have a whole separate video coming on importance of hydration. But I'm going to briefly mention this here because it's very important. So our body cannot digest uh, properly if we don't have enough liquid in our body. So the gut in itself is using uh, between seven and eight liters of uh, uh, fluid and small intestine in order to absorb nutrition from the food. So it's almost like it makes it into like large, huge watery soup, and then it can get the nutrition. If there's not enough water, it cannot get absorbed that. Uh, water helps to uh, for the food to be moving alongside our digestive tract, um, which is 30 feet long, which is about nine meters. So that's, that's, that's a lot of movement that needs to happen, and you know. And um, about 1.5 liter of that uh, that fluids from small intestines goes into your large colon, uh, where from then it exits um, when we get to the toilet. So we lose quite a bit of that water uh, every day. Um, but yeah, lack of adequate adequate levels of, of water in the body overall may as well link to the constipation. So um, that's not fun. So I feel like I rest my case. Okay, number five, <laughs> manage the environment um, and state you are eating in. So I think most of us do not think really about uh, how we, that where we eat and how we feel when we're eating will uh, affect our health or digestive, or at least 
you know some people may not consider that it is so crucial and important um the perceived perceived stress will have a huge and damaging effect on well on health overall but on digestive in a huge um way um eating on the go at your desk uh also links to tip point number one I say about chewing. It is quite hard to focus on chewing your food and making sure it's chewed properly. Um, if um, if you're like eating while you're working or you know thinking about work project or whatever, you know. Um, but that is just, the chewing is just a small aspect of that really. So the way stress affects uh, stress in the environment affects how we digest is. Um, um stress creates the fight and flight response I'm, I'm sure most of you already heard of it somewhere um so fight and flight uh it's really what it is <laughs> it's it's how it sounds and um, we are getting in a, in a response in which you know our body let's say perceives there is a tiger which is chasing us uh, we must right now either fight the tiger or uh escape the tiger so run away or there is another part of that response which is called freeze so we pretend that we did <laughs> either way we uh we release lots of hormones which are linked to that but what happens most importantly for our digestion is that in a stress uh, response our digestion is shut down because there really really is not the priority I, digestion there's so many things you know fertility um repair it's shut down because that is not the priority to be focusing on when you are being chased by a tiger. You know, it, it doesn't matter whether you digest your meal because you need to run away and survive. The problem is that these days we don't really see or our body doesn't perceive much of a difference between a tiger chasing us and a, um, you know, deadline at work. So, so overall, it's not good for us. <laughs> To be stressing if you don't know that yet i'm telling you here uh, yeah it's not good for you so therefore um you can either stress or digest you cannot both at once it is impossible really your body will not be doing those two things together so if you stress you really need to try to not to be so stressed i know it's easier said than done but you try to not to be so stressed uh, in order to be able to digest your food and absorb all this goodness you just put inside so um what's there yes so i think this is the one thing you can kind of um see what you can do so when you are feeling when you are sitting to your down to your meal hopefully you're sitting down to your meal <laughs> Uh, what is the environment? Are you watching news? Um, you know, are you just argued with someone? Are you stressed about your, I don't know, work deadline? You know, how are you feeling really? Tune in with that and see. Um, and, you know, just see whether you can do something to change that environment you are in. You know, maybe um, putting flowers or a candle or, um, you know, switch the news off and put calming music you know um but one of the best and quickest thing you can do to increase uh, a or create activate a relaxed response is to um, do a breathing exercise which i always make everyone do whenever i can so the <laughs> the uh, the exercise goes like that you breathe through your nose down into your stomach and you breathe out through your mouth and you go quite slowly doing that repeat that three times at least that's going to activate vagus nerve in your body which in, in fact is activating a relax um rest and digest response so you can do that at least if you cannot bring flowers and i don't know listen to the music yeah so there you are so um that's that Okay, so we covered that. I know that's a lot of information. So now you know the five things uh, you can do right now to help your immune system, uh, to support your body and becoming healthy and full of energy. Um, so to recap, I'm just going to say, first one is chew your food at least 30 times if, if possible. Second one is replace 
processed food with the whole foods. Um, third one is add fermented foods, probiotics or prebiotics. Uh, four, drink adequate amount of water. Um, and five is manage the environment and state you are eating and ideally reducing the stress. <sighs> okay, so using those five uh, um, health keys uh, will help you to ease digestion, absorb more nutrition, contribute to lower uh, food uh, sensitivities towards improving your immune system. Uh, there's so many things I did not manage to cover um trying to keep it short um so let me know in the comments below if there's anything you would want me to expand on um and any of those card related subjects or so on and um please click the like if you like the video and subscribe if you're interested in more uh, about holistic health and uh, leave a comment below and let me know uh, which one of those you're already doing or where you think you can start with. Uh, for more information, go to my website, arletabw.com. And thank you. Um, reduce your food and sensitivities. Uh, food and sensitivities? Oh my lord. <laughs>